is as real as it gets, okay? Especially if you're a Jamaican. Hey guys, welcome back. So, let me tell you, today what I'm gonna talk about, I'm gonna talk about something, a question I get all the time. Uh, on my Instagram and I get it sometimes on my YouTube so I figured I just do, do a video to address the cost of living in Medellin as you probably know based on my last video I recently relocated to Colombia from Jamaica and so I actually live here now and so the cost of living is something that I actually have to pay attention to so I just want to share everything that I've come across and if you're thinking of um, moving here you have all these uh, pieces of information now let me tell you, I'm gonna break it all the way down for now. It's gonna be the most straightforward video you'll find, especially if you are living in Jamaica, planning to or thinking about relocating to Colombia. Most of the videos you'll find on cost of living in Colombia, um, they're mostly for people based in the US. You know, their economic situation is a whole different situation than ja the Jamaican reality. So this video is going to break it down as a Jamaican who lived in Jamaica and moved to Medellin. First thing, I have a disclaimer to make. I can't tell you if it is um, a cheap, if the cost of living is cheap or expensive because that in and of itself is very relative. It can be cheap, it can be expensive. It depends on what you are accustomed to, the lifestyle that you want to live here, and you know just the different things that you find important that you will have to pay for um, if you're gonna ask me if it's expensive for me it's not really I mean it is a little bit cheaper than in Jamaica but my situation is a little I mean I don't have very many bills in Jamaica I as I said in my last video I'm single unmarried no children I don't have a whole bunch of bills so I it you know just like moving here it's I mean, I will say it's a little cheaper, but not a whole heap like, I have to move, everybody I have to move, come here now because it's so cheap, right? That's my first disclaimer. And my only dis disclaimer, I'm gonna jump into the video. The first thing I wanna talk about is getting here. Guys, I'm not gonna lie to you, transportation costs ain't the cheapest. It's not the cheapest from Jamaica because Jamaica does, is a little island in the middle of, boop, in the middle of the Caribbean Sea. So no, in, in no matter what you fly to, from Jamaica it's gonna be expensive for example if you're gonna fly from Jamaica to the States the cost is gonna be crazy high compared to if you were flying from which I recently found out if you're flying from the States to Colombia wicked cheap Colombia to the States wicked cheap but if you're gonna fly from Jamaica to Medellin which is where I am it's gonna cost you about a hundred thousand Jamaican dollars to get here uh, no, I'm not having a first class ticket. Me only reaching a front class because if you don't watch the vlog, then I'm going to know sheer luck, sheer buck ups, but 100 grand for a regular economy, economy ticket, okay? That is uh, the, the breakdown as it relates to travel. Now, as it relates to accommodation, this is going to be very difficult for me to tell you why. The cost of accommodation literally depends on who you are and what you're looking for. In my friend group alone, the cost of transportation, there's a, such a wide disparity, a broad disparity as it relates to the cost of transportation. I have friends in my friend group who pay literally almost a million Jamaican dollars per month for their accommodations, whilst I have friends in my friend group who pay like 75, 85 thousand dollars per month for accommodation. Where do I fall? I fall not, I'm not gonna even say the middle because I'm nowhere close to the middle. And I pay 120,000 Jamaican per month for my accommodation. Now, let's talk about what influences the cost. What influences the cost is, as I said, you're, what you're looking for, the kind of person you are. Um, let me give you a breakdown. So my friend who pays almost a million dollars per month, he is, where he stays, it's a one bedroom um, penthouse. So it's, it's pretty big. It's a one bedroom, it has a living room, it has two baths, it has a bath and a powder room. It has a big ass kitchen and it has an amazing view and it is in El Poblado. El Poblado is like the uptown, uptown of Jamaica. So it's like the, it's like the Russell Heights, the Norbrook, the Cherry Gardens of um, Medellin. But this is a penthouse that he's staying in 
um, the building, the complex has certain amenities like a pool, a jacuzzi, um, it has like a gaming floor type thing. So it's very nice, but would this girl be paying that? Absolutely not. Listen to me, when I came here on vacation last month, those things mattered to me, right? So I stayed, I never stayed in the heart of El Poblado like he is. I stayed maybe like a 10, 15 minute walk from the town and I paid around, I want to say 50,000 Jamaican dollars for five nights at my Airbnb. That's not even in the middle of El Poblado now. But the reason why it costs that much is the closer you get to El Poblado, the more expensive it is. And my complex had a pool, which up to now, I said a pool because maybe just busy a party party out our road. So many people see no pool, they have gym, I said gym one time. But it was important to me then because it was the first time I was coming here and I wanted to make sure everything was accessible to me. Living here long term, that is not practical. That ain't practical, none at all. So um that is why i'm not anywhere close to the poblado because the closer you get to the poblado the more expensive it is gonna be where i live it's probably like a 20 25 minute drive from the poblado so it's kind of like the port more it's like the port more of medellin um but it's nicer than port more when i say nicer i mean um it looks like um, it looks like what can i say it kind of looks like new ah uh, it's like new kingston right that's that's the kind of vibe you get you know that road um nutsford boulevard i think it's called my the town of where i live gives me nutsford boulevard vibe but it's not cherry gardens or norbrook or wherever that is right um so in terms of the kind of accommodation i have here for one hundred and twenty thousand dollars, which you'll find that's pretty normal it's your place is not it's not big at all in fact this is a studio my bed is here it's a king size bed Kitchen is over here, kitchen is relatively small, laundry is over there. There's, there's not a laundry area, it's kind of like the washer is there. <laughs> um, there's a workstation over there, there's a living room set up over there. There's a nice big ass window right there, which is, it has a great view. There is a breakfast pantry, um, table. It's a, it's a big, it's a pretty nice size breakfast table to be honest with you. I tend to work most times here actually, because over there, I do my sessions over there. Uh, because I don't know um, the lighting is great there and the, pro the background is, a, is very pro I like the feel that the background gives it's very professional which I'll do a video and show you it has like, a, like an office vibe so I tend to do my sessions over there if I, if I have any um, interviews I do it over there but when I'm getting down into my work I come right here the TV's here um, and the building has 24 hour security which is very important to me because I'm female and alone um, something to note that most of these buildings that you're gonna be in as a foreigner that you're gonna get access to because most of you will not be able to get access to for a long-term lease because you're not a citizen or you don't have a work permit the ones that you get access to they tend to have very strict rules for example this one I'm not allowed to have any visit um, any as opposed to guests and visitors but I'm not allowed to have any visitors here like period the last one I stayed at, they're allowed, but they have to provide your passports. Literally, if you are Colombian or not, you have to provide your passport. So it's very strict. Um, but the, uh, the, the complex is very modern. The unit itself is very modern. My bathroom, which is here, my bathroom, which is here, is very, very modern. There's hot water and thing. And there's a garbage chute. I literally just walk outside of the apartment, drop my garbage in a little hole, and it carries it all the way a couple floors down um to the main garbage shoe so it's small but it's so cozy <laughs> it's so cozy and it's fine because it's just me alone and not even allowed to have guests anyway um so it's fine it's 120 000, as i said my friend who does i think it's 75 to, or maybe 85 i can't remember she lives like way out <laughs> she would live kind of like maypen <laughs> Type, that's kind of the distance that she lives so as you can see the further inland you go or I mean oh, like further from Pop del Pobla that you go the cheaper it will be for you if you're coming here though on vacation, I'm gonna say to you just just stay in El Poblado. You're just gonna have to trust me on this. If it's your first time, go to El Poblado. It's more touristy, not like in Mo uh, Mobi or Ochi type of tourists where everybody lock up in an all inclusive hotel. No, you find um, more like you find Starbucks there. You find more American foods there, like French toast and stuff. Um, it's 
you know, you find more English speaking tourists there, you're not gonna find English speaking like service men and women. It's just Spanish, just get just get used to that. But you'll find more tourists there who speak English. You'll be a little bit more comfortable there. So just stay there, you'll be fine. If you're doing long term though, it's not gonna be very practical. Or else you're gonna stay in some like a matches box. You think New York City type of vibe, you're gonna some matches box. The place now go modern. Next up, let's talk about transportation. So my thing is a little bit, I can't really, all right, so I can't really talk about transportation because I don't really pay for transportation, why? Remember I told you I live in a little town, right? So my little town has its own little center, city center, which it's actually a little city center. I have two supermarkets within, I'm gonna, I've actually timed it. It takes me seven minutes to walk, to walk, not even drive, to walk from here to, two supermarkets two major supermarkets one is more high end one is more not so high and i'm going to talk about that a little later um seven minutes to several bakeries and coffee shops seven minutes to like everything restaurants and stuff the city center is about seven minutes away from me so everything i could possibly need is in the city center i don't need to take uber anywhere now what i find myself doing is like when i have a late day for example, my coaching session starts at 11 that day or something. I find myself walking out a little bit more because there's a big ass mall, which is a 25 minute walk from my place. So I just walk for 25 minutes to the mall, um, which I'll talk about a little bit later. I walk for 25 minutes. I don't have to, I don't need to pay for transportation. The only time I pay for an Uber, because yes, there's Uber here, is when it's raining and I can't walk or I'm going into town, into El Poblado. So that's the only time really. Um, and let me give an idea as to cost. El Poblado, as I said, is about a 25 minute drive from here. If you're going in a time where there's not a lot of traffic or a lot of demand for the Uber, you're gonna pay about two, 300 Jamaican dollars for a 25 minute ride. So imagine you paying, 20, you paying two, 300 Jamaican dollars from Portmore to Kingston and it's you alone in the car. So cheap, right? Very cheap. But if you're going in high traffic time or there's a lot of demand for the for Ubers, then you're gonna pay around 800 Jamaican dollars. That caught me several times. About 800 Jamaican dollars, but still, imagine 800 dollars from Kingston to Portmore, you alone, still pretty cheap. So yeah, if you're gonna stay in El Poblado, you do not need transportation. Everything is literally within walking distance. Let's start groceries. All right, so when I first came, I went and I was like, oh my God, all right, I have to stock my kitchen. You know, not never in here, obviously. I mean, if you get things like salt and oil and you know, regular things to stock, like the basics, the basics. So I went to the first grocery store I went to, um, that which I recorded, I'm gonna show you the clip. That is not a very high end grocery store. It thinks shoppers fair. It's like a shoppers fair back home. Um, I got all the groceries that you're seeing. I got so many things and my bill came up to about $138,000, 138,000 pesos, Colombian pesos, which is about 5,300 Jamaican dollars there about. And the groceries that you see would ordinarily run me or keep me for two weeks. I'll tell you why that's not the case here. Would ordinarily keep me for two weeks. Um, so, you know, I, could make like stir fries with this for two days for dinner. I could make um, what else like salads and stuff, eggs and for breakfast, chorizo for breakfast, that kind of a thing. That's usually how I eat back home. Um, minus the chorizo because have you seen the price of chorizo back home? Oh, grocery Jamaica, grocery Jamaica. The groceries here are hands down, no, way cheaper. No matter what you pick up, it's gonna be cheaper here than in Jamaica, hands down. The look at things I'm wasting on the video. When I show you the clip, would have easily cost you like 15, 20 gram back home. But this is, as I said, like 5,200, 5,300 um, Jamaican dollars. But here's the thing the next day, I was wandering up and down the town, you know, trying to get to know the area. And I came across another grocery store, which it's like Whole Food in the States. It was so pretty. <sighs> I love going there. But I got some more groceries just because it's so pretty. <laughs> I got lots of fruits, more vegetables, got coffee and stuff, and I spent maybe 50,000 to 60,000 Colombian pesos. That's around, um, I'm actually gonna calculate it and tell you because I want you to 
understand like really how much things cost here. So I said 55,000 55, Colombian pesos is around 2,200 Jamaican dollars it cost me. I got strawberries, melon, papaya. Jamaica could never, in the grocery store, could never. So groceries are wicked cheap here in comparison to Jamaica. Let's talk eating out. So remember I said I got enough groceries the last for two weeks? Yeah, so I ate off all of those groceries in like two days. <laughs> in about two days but it's like me I'm not place which let me tell you when I'm comfortable when I'm cozy I eat so that's what I do so when I'm not working right I will just cuddle up in bed watch Netflix and I'm gonna want to eat if the food is here I will eat it and that's what happened I ate eat apple well I fruits them in a like 30 minutes <laughs> and then we said no mama feel you see me in the kitchen, I cook chorizo, it's not pan chorizo, so I end up eating up everything. So I came up with a new plan because I don't want to ruin, I'm bloated now because I eat cheese, so I'm very bloated. <laughs> and um, yeah, I'm bloated. But my body, I don't want to ruin it, depending on my body, well, uh -uh, so I'm going to say, I've come up with a new plan. So a new plan is going to sound weird to you, but when you hear me out, you're going to realize it makes sense. My plan is to just eat out all the time. Hear me out. Listen to my plan. Back home in Jamaica, the reason why I was able to maintain my body, um, even when I didn't go to the gym, is because I eat pretty healthily and I don't eat very frequently back home. I eat my first meal at like 11, 12, 11 a.m., 12 noon, right? And then I eat again like maybe 3 p.m., 4 p.m., and I don't eat again because of how I eat, what I eat, I usually am very full and I don't need to eat again. So I'm going back to that, right? If I don't have food in here, I am able to, I'm not going to be starving me at dead, none at all, until maybe noon, which is when I will, you know, put on my shoes and go walk to get food. So I'm walking, exercising to go get food. Now, the place that I get food from, they have a, um, like a special every day. And the spe once you get the special, it's going to cost about 19,000 Colombian pesos, which is about 750 Jamaican dollars. That special can be fish. It depends on what, again, is the meal of the day. It can be and all everything like that I eat there every day, literally, and every day the food shop. I eat fish, I eat pork, I eat chicken, everything I eat over there tastes good. And it's big portions. Like you get for example, I'm gonna put up a video, sweet and sour, um or sorry, teriyaki uh, pork with rice, and you get soup with it for $750. But here's my thing, the portion size is so big that I can't eat it all. I'm gonna feel too full. So I normally eat half and then I package half to go. I walk back home. Usually I have more, I have coaching sessions. So I jump into my sessions. My next break is usually like 5 p.m. Sorry, 6 p.m. So I eat my next half at 6 p.m. and I don't eat again for the rest of the day. So not only am I maintaining my pending summer body, but it's actually, it works out. I can afford it. It's not, it's not gonna murder me to do it. Cost me 750 Jamaica dollars for the day. So it's, I mean, I could do that, it's fine. Sometimes though, like when I have a late start to the day, I may feel like I want to go walking to just start the day. So I probably walk to a coffee shop and I pick up some coffee, like a cappuccino with almond milk and I probably get a bagel or something. Um, that will run me about 15,000 Colombian pesos, which let me convert that for you. 15,000 Colombian pesos, that's about $600. So even if there's a day when I want to do both, you know, grab the coffee and the bagel plus eat at my restaurant. It's not gonna cost me more than 1,400 Jamaican dollars for the day. Now, when it comes to eating out, eating out, like you're gonna get, you're gonna get dressed and you're gonna go out, it's still not gonna run you that much. Like Jamaica, me not gonna even lie to you, God, me not gonna even lie to you. That was one of the, you know, many pros and cons of should I leave or should I stay? Should I leave Jamaica or should I stay in Jamaica? One of the major things that I did up on the board is say, Guys, all me go a cook shop and she said they must sell curry goat box food for 2200 Jamaican. Oh, them think I go buy that, not this again. Though. And then I realized that it's like across the board. So I was like, hell no, I need to leave. I need to get out of, out of this bitch. So that's what I did. But if you're gonna come here, I mean, like a sit down meal, guys, if you're gonna do that, you spend like 1,900, maybe even 2,200 for like 
actually this is a real example i'm gonna put a video on here and show you i got um two one sangria one glass of sangria one aperol spritz i got brunch which is what you're gonna see in the video i got a cappuccino and my bill was like 2200 including tip that's me going out yesterday which was friday i worked pretty much all day so i wasn't in the mood to go out i was pretty tired so i got a burger a gourmet burger so think going think like you're going to on court or ac hotel and you're gonna get a burger that's the quality burger that, that's i went to the ac hotel off medellin i got a burger i got wings i'm gonna put a video up so you can see i got a burger um double patties by the way double patties and it, it tastes I've never had a burger in Jamaica that tastes like that, ever. Oh no, if you're on my Instagram, how many times do you see me post on my Instagram, where can I get a good burger? I literally drove all over Kingston. I've tried so many places trying to find a good burger. This place, easily, at eight out of 10. Kid you not, eight out of 10. Gourmet burger. I hope you heard that part. I got wings with it. Mm -hmm. I got wings. Think wings from AC Hotel. Mm -hmm. I got french fries and I'm gonna get this Nutella paste or something. We don't know what up to know, but it tastes so good. It's like a donut, it's like donut balls with holy pan Nutella in the middle. I got like eight of those and it comes with. Hold on! Come still on it. You get three so I got three sauces with my Nutella thing. This is caramel. This is some raspberry sauce and this is chocolate. I got all of that. You wanna know what my, what my bill was? My bill was 2,200. Yeah, I don't know what it is with 2,200. I keep paying for things, for uh, getting things that cost you, to, but I kid you not, I'll show you the receipt. To actually, was it even that much? Let me, let me convert it and tell you. No, it was 2,329 Jamaican dollars. I'll show you. For all of that, okay? So when it comes to eating out, the, if you're gonna get food, it's gonna be way cheaper. Now let's talk alcohol. <laughs> if you're gonna get local alcohol, it's gonna be way cheaper. Like Aguilo, Aguilo Light or Aguilo or Agredente or anything like that, like local things, it's gonna be a lot cheaper than in Jamaica. Now if you're gonna get international things like Hennessy, um, Grey Goose and things like that, it's gonna cost a pretty penny. Thursday night, I randomly felt like I wanted to go partying. That's another thing I love about here. Like every day you can wake up and you're like, even if it's on Monday, I feel like partying tonight. I best believe you're gonna find a hopping club. So I went partying Thursday night and I ended up spending like 8,000 um, Jamaican dollars because I got a hookah, I got like five beers because I had work next morning and I wanted to be, was, you know, home mobile. So I got like five, um, I got two Aguila lights, one Aguila, and the rest in Corona there. I got a hookah, a full hookah, and I got a shot of tequila and a shot of Agudente. I don't know how to pronounce it. And my bill came up to 7,000 odd, 8,000 Jamaican dollars. But as I said, you never hear me say anything about no Hennessy or nothing there because I was hanging out with some people who um, I met some Jamaican people. And you know, it's so like, you know how Jamaicans are, like, you Jamaica? Let me tell you how we met. That's another story. But bottom line is, found to Jamaican people. We went clubbing together. They got bottles of like Jack Daniels and another set of people got some Hennessy and stuff. Their bill, oh, their bill wasn't cheap. The thing is, if you're gonna get international stuff, you're gonna pay international prices. And the other thing is that I was partying in El Poblado, which is a tourist spot. If you're gonna party in the tourist spot, you're gonna pay tourist prices. But unfortunately. If you want like a real hopping party, you're gonna have to go to El Poblado. So yeah, that's the cost of like going out. You know, if I'm gonna tell you about other things that you know you can do that w that would not include partying, I'm gonna be so honest with you. I can't tell you. I'm not that kind of girl who. Oh my God, let's go to the. There are no beaches here. But if there were, I still wouldn't see the beach because I'm a beach person. I think. I mean, it's so inconvenient. There's sand everywhere. The water is salty. Like you owe me. I can burn out your, your, your soul. I don't really like the beach ironic because i'm jamaican but yeah you're not gonna find me on a river the water is way too cold medellin itself is cold this way to make going on a river imagine that i'm not no man i'm not gonna hike up no mountain i'm not that kind of girl i'm not gonna go museums i can't honestly i cannot tell you i can tell you what the parties cost though 
<laughs> which is what I just did. Last thing I'm gonna talk about now is the shopping. So as it relates to the shopping, there's one mall that I think is just so great. Jamaica has no mall like this at all. It's a mall that I tell you is 25 minute walk from here. Um, it has numerous floors, but here's the thing: it doesn't have very many Jamaica, um, very many American brands. So you'll find you'll find Sacobody, you'll find Zara, you'll find Mac, but most of the stores are like not American. Um, if you're a Zara girl like me, Zara here is cheaper, not like a whole bunch cheaper, but cheaper. For example, I spent like 20 grand on blazers in the States, but you probably pay like 18 grand, 17 to 18 grand here for blazer, maybe. So it's cheaper, but not wholly cheaper. Malls though, it's just nice. Ice skating rink and everything there. I'll do another video on that. But yeah, so all in all, I just broke down the cost of living here in Medellin. I don't know if this helps you. I hope it does, but all right. I'll see you in my next video. Bye.